How you doing? You fighting each other? Huh? You getting any fights? You guys fighting? All right. Show them how you fight. Let's show the people how you fight. All right, let's scrap. Where's the octagon? You need an octagon? Come here. Oh, you just want to play with me? All right. You're so dang cute. I'm very happy that I got Rocky and Apollo. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you guys remember I had a little chihuahua named Mushu for about 17 years. <laughs> And uh, he passed away in January while I was at the Bahamas. And the idea of getting new pups was just not on my mind, you know. And then uh, Marissa's grandma had a litter of pups. So I, um, she really wanted them, you know. And then I met them and they were so freaking cute. And they were tiny and it was after the World Series of Poker. And I said, okay, let's do this. Cause the, I, I mean, you know, she, she wanted them during the World Series. I said, during the World Series of Poker, I play every single day. I don't want my puppies to go from this to this and me not being there. Kind of like being a dad, I would say. Whereas, if you have kids, you know, like, I can imagine guys who play poker for a living and they travel, like Eric Seidel and Chip Reese, I remember he used to talk about that. Like, they didn't travel the tour and all that kind of stuff because they had kids. I remember someone else mentioned this. I think, who was it that said, if you look at the GPI, the Global Poker Index, and look at the top 30 or so, what you'll notice that the top 30 have in common is no babies. They got no kids. Because I gotta imagine it's hard to do that. Um, have children and travel the circuit and be gone two or three weeks, especially when they're very, very young. Uh, babies, I keep got, ba everybody's, everybody's in my head about babies. I was in San Diego for a, for a weekend for Marissa's birthday. A lot of babies there. A lot of people going, giving me the nudge, the most annoying nudge ever. You know, they're like, when are you gonna? Chillax, okay? I'm still a baby. I'm only, I just turned 26. That was 17 years ago, but you know, relatively recent. <laughs> so I don't know, we'll see. I kind of like my, everyone says, you know, ch children will change your life. They'll change your life, right? And I'm thinking, exactly. I really like the way my life is right now. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely been a topic of conversation around this household of late. Uh, Marissa, Marissa said to me, what was it, two nights ago? You're not getting any younger. Yeah, thanks for the reminder. I'm kid poker. Come on, chillax. So, uh, so, yeah, who knows? Who knows what we'll do with that? But right now we got puppies, and I love me some puppies. So today is day three of the Poker Masters. We've got, uh, we got some work to do here, obviously. We got, uh, the way that it worked out, unfortunately, in terms of the, the purple jacket, um, a lot of people are suggesting that the 100K is gonna be so much bigger than the other tournaments that it's very likely whoever wins the 100K is also gonna win the purple jacket because it's based on money and not points. So we'll see. Um, I'd say it's been a rough start. I mean, I, I really feel like I'm playing really well, like extremely well in both events. Um, there may have been one move I could have made against Adrian Mateos that I didn't, that I just thought about yesterday. This is what I think about, like when I'm done a tournament and I bust, I'm like, okay, the obvious cooler hand is like, it is what it is. But was there any other hands that I could have picked up that I didn't? And there was one that uh, I just didn't have a good enough read on the situation in terms of like Adrian Mateos, but I gotta tell you the hand. I raised with a five spades, this was yesterday, uh, to 7K. Scott Seaver calls in position, with it calls a 7K. Adrian's in the small blind, and he's sitting on about 120,000, as am I. He tanks for a little bit, and he makes it 30,000 from the small blind. So I have ace, five of spades, it's an easy fold. Or is it? Like, it's such a great spot, right? When Scott flats there, he usually doesn't have a hand that he can call a re-raise with. So for Adrian, he's looking to pick up seven and seven, 14, the big blind, uh, three, you know, like a, a nice juicy pot for 30,000. He could be doing that with a wide variety of hands, I felt, and I thought, he should fold a lot if I move in, even though he's put in 30 of his 120. But I chickened out and I didn't make the move because I just wasn't certain and I wasn't really sure. Because uh, the thing is with ace five of spades there is like, you, you have a blocker to aces, right? So he's, unlike, he's less likely to have actually aces. And if he has kings, you're a two to one dog, okay? If he has ace king, you know, you're a little more than that, but pretty close. So, you know, even when you get called, you still have an opportunity to win the pot. Whereas sometimes I'm just going to win a very substantial pot. I'm gonna win 50,000. I'm gonna go from like, whatever I was at, like 120, 125 to like 175 without even seeing a flop. So plays like that, I think when you're really, really sharp and probably one of Phil Hellmuth's biggest strengths and John Juwand and players like that is kind of like recognizing weakness and pouncing on it, you know, three betting in spots like that. Never been my forte because I'm not a short stack guy. I like playing deep, small balls, a deep stack strategy. But um, I'm, I'm obviously gonna be looking for spots when they're available and uh, capitalizing if I can.
Yeah, so this is easily the hardest part of the day. These two guys think they're coming, but they're not. You'll be okay. Marissa's at dance. She'll be back and take good care of you guys. Have fun. Rip up all the toilet paper you want. Enjoy yourselves. You can't come though. Sorry. Do you want me or do you want me gone? Keeping with the theme of just amazing table draws, that's half the German sandwich, green campaign. Scott Siever, Justin Bonimo, David Peters, Nietzsche, and Green Kenny. This is my table. This is basically what I've been looking at. All the king's Just about to get started here at the Shot the chips there. Do a little vlog. So, had an interesting hand. The Dan Smith listening to the hand I just had. I'm not going to do that one because he, he wants to know what I had. So, I'm not going to tell. Uh, not that just, no, it's fine. Not that no, it's, <laughs> it'd be nice to know. No, you couldn't win. I mean, you could win. I don't know what the hell you had, but you weren't ahead. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, the hand against David Peters. Lines are 500, 1,000. I raise uh, middle position with pocket nines to 3,000. He defends the big line, and it comes jack, six, four, with two spades. He checks, I bet 2,500. He calls. The turn is a six. Now he bets 3,500. Really interesting spot. I kind of felt like before he bet he was going to do that. Um, my hand's too strong to fold, so I call. River is the eight of spades, completing the flush. And as he's thinking, I'm thinking, you know what? If he checks here, I'm gonna rep a real strong, I'm gonna rep, I'm gonna bet 20. I'm gonna just go big time, just like over bet pot. And as I'm thinking about it, I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta do this, I gotta fire the 20. He goes ahead and bets exactly 20,000. So, um, as much as it could be a bluff, you could be turning like something like seven, eight into a bluff, like making with a pair of eights. I beat those hands. I don't beat a jack that he's turning into a bluff. Um, obviously, if he has any hands that beat me, I'm just dead. So, like a six or if he made the flush. So, pretty easy fold, but interesting spot that he bet exactly the amount I was going to. So we're at the first break here, um, watching also, let's see if you can see that back here. Everyone, it's kind of cool while we play. How do I do this? Let me get this up here. Oh, I got it, I got it. So while we play, up on the screen, as you can see behind me, is, uh, there you go. Yeah, so everyone gets to watch what's happening with the competitors we're playing with throughout the entire week, which is kind of fun. And everyone's watching Fedor Holtz get it in with ace ten of clubs against ace jack and all in before the flop and the guy with the ace jack flops the jack but is drawing dead <laughs> i mean it's just special right fedor can do it so day three good start to my stack got uh i'm you know i'm doing i'm doing some good things i'm really happy with the way that i'm playing and uh, just gotta run good at the right time then and today's the day let's do it my way going day to day but i can't fight the feeling when i'm chilling with you nothing at the same when i kick it with you and i've been down this road before and it never ends right always in a fight i've been too busy thinking about you every night i've been too busy gotta book another flight because my life ain't been the same no more and i ain't got any more time to waste i'm gonna get yeah. it straight to the point with you so nick Schulman decided to use two time banks and that's the board right so i have to show him just one card that one with the extra special fun one. <laughs> royal flush, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! I made a royal flush. Look at that. He's loving it, huh? I kind of wish I called. Really? <laughs> yeah, just to take the two time banks to run into that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very All nice, right. Daniel. I'll take it. Royal flush. Very I don't nice. ever have All right, so we just ended level six, and those last three levels I played some, what I'd like to call some street poker. <laughs> Fittingly, we're on the street right now here at the Aria. Um, I'll tell you about a hand here. I went, and there was a lot of just crazy hands I played. Well, obviously, I made a roll flush as I had a video of that. Um, made a couple moves here and there. Got up to about, you know, close to 300,000 now. And uh, this hand just happened right before the break. I played three hands in a row. Got re-raised in a couple. It was like just really in, like in the streets, as Bryn Kenny would say. I uh, raised next to the button with four or five of diamonds to 5,500. And on the button, Stefan Schilchabel made it 18-5. I called with the four or five of diamonds. 
and the flop came queen, queen, jack, two hearts, one diamond. So I have nothing and it's just an easy check fold, right? Not so fast. I checked, he bet 10,500. I thought that flop could absolutely smash the range that I call with, you know, like ace queens, king queens, queen jacks, lots of hands. So I check raise him, check raise him to 30,500. He calls, I'm like, ow, oh, that's not good for me. That's just not good for me. So the turn's a jack, so it puts queen, queen, jack, jack here. And I asked myself, if I had a queen, what would I do here? If I had a jack, what would I do here? I'm clearly checked, so I checked. He checked it back, and the river was an eight. And the eight is an important card because he knows I won't bet 9-10 now, right? Because I don't need to bluff that. It's a straight beats, you know, any hand that's gonna, uh, just, you know what I'm saying. Um, so I decided it's actually a, a hand that makes my hand even look more credible. Slightly, not a huge deal. And I bet 40,000 on the river. Uh, and he just tanked a little bit and folded. So we are sitting at 300,000 to end level six. Three more levels, which really starts to get, you know, uh, vault, lots of, what do you call it? Variance. Um, Got to run good here, so that's the plan. But I feel good, you know. I'm, I'm trusting my instincts. I'm doing what I think makes sense. Obviously, you know, when do you decide to check raise four, five of diamonds on a queen, queen, jack board? When it feels right, based on you know, you could look, you could break down the math of it, which and like and you know, vary your play based on sort of like a random number generator. No, okay, well, some percentage of the time I should bluff here. Uh, I, I prefer to tailor it more to the situation and my opponent and their perception of me. So rather than just like say, okay, 30% of the time I'm doing this, I try to, and I might even be say that, like, okay, maybe I say 10% of the time I'm gonna do something. Yeah, sure, bud. Yeah, sure. Big fan, man. Yeah, I was just doing a little vlog right here, but we're good. Thanks, Thanks Dan. Oh, you got it. Big fan. Have a good one. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I like to tailor it to more specifically the situation. Um, and it's, you know, the, I think the key is actually knowing what the right numbers are and then adjusting them based on the situation. That's what I try to do. I try to have an idea of how often should I check razor with four or five of diamonds, then choose that time, not based on a looking at the clock like Isaac Haxon does and says like, you know, if he thinks he's supposed to bluff 30% of the time, what he does is he'll look at the clock and if it's a one, two, or three, he bluffs, and if it's like all any of the other numbers, he doesn't. So he's always going to be perfectly randomized. It's not my style, you know, it clearly works for him. He's a great player. But I try to, as I said, tailor it to the situation. Let's do this. We did it, we did it. We're at the uh, end of level nine, one bullet, no rebuy, and I almost feel like that's like a min cash. Doing really good in chips with 400K, averages about 270. Should be about a 50 player field as the other couple were, and we're down to actually 21 actual people, and it should be about seven or eight get paid. So I'm in good shape, feeling good. This is uh, the famous JRB game, by the way. They're probably gonna be mad about the game. <laughs> that's the Ivy's Ruben game. They play big, and, they're not, and pros are not allowed, so. I mean, I actually say I'm telling him I'm retired. <laughs> so, having fun here. 21 left. Gotta get back to the grind till I shine, cause I'm running out of time and I never die trying. If you're gonna waste my time, let me know, cause I can't get it back, so I gotta save mine. I'm gonna catch feelings, I'm too busy. Focus on the music, put it on for my city, so everywhere you go. Okie dokie. So, before I tell you how it went, let's just talk about these No Limit tournaments and how much, much fun I've been having. During the World Series of Poker, I mention like routinely how I, No Limit is boring. But that's because I'm playing mixed games every day, right? But getting the opportunity to play with the best players in the world on a daily basis for high stakes, um, to just No Limit, I'm actually really enjoying it. Today we came in 11th place on one bullet. Didn't make the money, very, very close, but the last hand was, you know, I had 22 big blinds, 22, 22 big blinds with pocket nines. Dan Smith picked up pocket queens, c'est la vie. Um, again, I felt like I played well. Putting myself in situations to succeed. Um, didn't really get a lot of hands late. So when I picked up the nines, I was like, ooh, these are pretty. Um, so yeah, that's three in. We are now officially down 
because we have spent in three tournaments, we've spent 250,000 in buy-ins and we've cashed for, well, 252, what is it? 254,000, I think, right? Yeah, 254,000 in buy-ins and 102,000 in caches. We've got event number four tomorrow, which is the last 50K. And then it's really the, the, the you know, the crown jewel, which is the 100K because the structure is better. It's uh, 60 minute levels and um, the prize pool is gonna be bigger. So people are talking and saying that most likely whoever wins the, the 100K is gonna win the purple jacket. It goes well for me. I do have like one a small cash, pick up a nice juicy one tomorrow, put myself in contention and uh, yeah, just continue to do the best we can, right? Just right now I'm gonna be on the drive home I'm just kind of focusing on the hands that I played and thinking about if anything I could have done differently, were there spots I missed? And when I say differently, uh, I'm just talking about like, was there spots specifically that I could have stole chips and I didn't? Because um, against the best of the best, you gotta pick up all the chips available to you. And if you're not, they are. So, end of day three, y'all. See you back tomorrow. Okay guys, seriously, no messing around. You've gotta go to pokergo.com right now, use promo code Daniel to save 10 bucks and sign up because you're gonna get access to all the super high roller bowl footage, World Series of Poker live streams, and so much more. So go to pokergo.com right now.